Thank you, Doctor. Now we're going to move to member questions under the five-minute rule. And I'm going to recognize myself for five minutes of questions. First, we're going to show a video to get things started. The footage you are about to see is from this dash cam of a Pennsylvania State Police patrol car on July 13th. This footage has never been released to the public, and it has been edited to show relevant parts. The video, the video as you will see from the time, uh, the time stamp in the upper right-hand corner, begins at 18.08, or six or eight minutes after 6 p.m. In the first 12 seconds of the video, you will see a figure circled in red crossing the roofs of multiple AGR buildings. This man is Thomas Crooks. You will then see the patrol car begin moving toward the AGR buildings, and we lose sight of Crooks, but about 19 seconds into the video, he reappears. Again, we have circled him in red before we lose sight of him at about 20 seconds later. Now, we cut the video for length so it picks up at about a minute and a half later at 6.10 p.m. and 30 se 38 seconds. Here you will see law enforcement around the AGR building. At this point, all law enforcement entities staffing the rally are aware that there is an individual on the roof of AGR, but they do not know he is armed. Behind the trees, you will see one officer attempting to lift another officer up onto the roof, and you will see that officer pull himself up and look to the left. According to that officer's interview with the task force, he sees crooks with the long gun and Crooks turns and points the weapon in his direction. The officer then falls to the ground, injuring his ankle, and radios that the man on the roof is armed at 11 minutes after 6. That portion of the video ends here. We know that the first shot from Crooks is fired just 32 seconds later. We will play the video now. This will take about 51 seconds. I realize it's hard to, to see some of this, but so Crooks, as he makes his way across the roof, this is, by the way, a Pennsylvania State Police cruiser uh, and has the dash cam. So you were able to see some things that nobody else was able to see, but I know it's, it's difficult. Um, Lieutenant Harold, I'm going to direct the first line of questioning to you since this is state police footage. Footage and evidence show that Crooks was on the roof of the AGR building for over three minutes before shots were fired. Lieutenant Harold, please describe those few minutes leading up to the shots, shots fired from your vantage point. My, my position when the shots were fired, I was behind the stage. Um, I can't answer to any, any questions regarding uh, Mr. Crooks on the roof because I did not have that information. Uh, I was behind the stage. It was, it was very loud, and, and if it was transmitted over our portables, I did not hear that. But I had returned to my car briefly uh, once uh, the former president had taken the stage to uh, retrieve uh, a cell phone that had first net, and then I was returning back to the stage when the uh, first shot rang out. Officer Blasco, same question. At that time, I was... Uh I was at Brady Paul and I was working my way over to the AGR building uh, to assist other Butler Township units uh, with looking for crooks. As I got to uh, the water tower, I parked underneath the water tower um, and began to make my way to AGR. That's when the shots rang out. Thank you. Commander Lenz, you were reportedly the first person to call out shots fired over the radio. Were you aware that someone was on the roof or that he was armed prior to the shots being fired? Also, please describe those few minutes leading up to shots fired from your vantage point. For the first two questions, yes, I was aware through radio traffic that there was somebody on the roof and also that he was armed. Uh, the first report that there was somebody on the roof came uh, on a different radio channel than the tactical units were operating, which would be PD Ops 3, uh, and that transmission at 1808 
and 20 seconds is somebody's on the roof. Uh, at 1809, I made a phone call to the PSP sergeant in the Secret Service Command Center and relayed the information that there was a suspect on the roof of the AGR building. Uh, there was some additional radio traffic from the Butler Township Police Units. Uh, and at 18.11.03 hours on that PD Ops 3 channel, again, not the channel the tactical units were operating, is the Butler Township unit that reports he is armed. I believe he says, I see him, he's laying down, and he has a long gun. Uh, so my actions for that at that point, the gentleman on the roof clearly is a threat, and I radioed to our quick reaction force to deploy them to the AGR complex uh, to begin to address that threat. Prior to me finishing that radio transmission, you can hear the shots being fired uh, through my open microphone. Okay. Sorry. You know, I, ha I have a problem uh, going back to the actual sighting of, of Mr. Crooks more than once and way, way before. 11 months after six. I think that one of the things is the panel has heard from different people at different times is of the thousands of people that were on the grounds that day, there is repeatedly one person that keeps standing out in the, in the back and forth, all the different communication. And it is, in fact, Thomas Crooks that they're talking about. So we knew there was somebody that was very suspicious. We also knew there was somebody that we weren't able to actually come in contact with, and we kept losing contact with him. We saw him with a range binder. We saw him doing things that were not probably in line with what people go to a rally for. And, and I think that I'm, I'm constantly going to be wondering at what point, at what point did somebody say, we're not sure the area is secure and safe? There's nothing understanding before that. The way you all responded, I think, was incredible. I want to thank you for that, but I still can't understand. Of all the different people that were on the grounds that day, thousands of people, there's only one consistent person that they identify, and it is ultimately the shooter. So I don't believe the grounds were safe and secure that day. I'm just trying to understand is what it was or what it would have taken for somebody to say, keep Mr. Trump inside until we clear this up. Well, Commander, Commander Lenz, because <clears throat> you and I have had not just minutes, but hours together and a couple of days we'll be going a deep, deep dive to what happened. Do you feel that the Secret Service adequately prepared you and your men for July 13th? I believe I can answer the, the tasks that they had given us, uh, which would be to provide two counter assault teams, two sniper teams, and a quick reaction force. Uh, we were certainly prepared for the missions that they had given us. There were additional things, obviously, that uh, probably needed covered, uh, but they had never asked us to do that. They never tasked us with that. Uh, so, so given what they specifically asked us to do, we were certainly prepared to do that. Okay, so you did what they asked you to do. But looking back at it now, it's, the question is, did they did they clearly identify what it is that they expected you or what you could have been responsible for? Uh, Mr. Velasco, same question. Uh, so I took my direction from Commander Lenz and of the, of the things that we were asked to do from, from my direction from Commander Lenz for the pre-planning stages for the sniper teams, um, I, would, I would feel that uh, I did what was requested of me from Commander Lenz. Okay, so hindsight's always twenty twenty. Looking back on that, do you think you were adequately prepared for what it is that ultimately happened? There's always uh, things that you can you think that you can do better, uh, but with the information that we had, um, I believe that we did the very best that we can or we could. Lieutenant Harold. You feel the Secret Service adequately prepared you and your men for the event? The Secret Service, after meeting with them at the site and going through what they requested PSP to do, was primarily the security of the farm show inside the fence line. So adequate troopers, I had 30 troopers inside that fence line once the motorcade arrived. And I, I feel that with them being the lead and we were in a request assist 
um, function, we provided what they asked for and we secured the inner perimeter of the farm showgrounds. Yeah, I, I think with local law enforcement, I think you did everything that you were tasked to do that day. But looking back and looking at the game films and say, you know what, there probably were other things we should have been clued in on. That uh, Just ask all of you, when, when did you first meet with Secret Service and understand what your role was going to be that day? Looking at July 13th and working backwards from that Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, when did we get together to find out what we should do that day? So our, for Butler ESU, our first contact from the Secret Service was Friday, July 5th at 1.55, and that was a phone call uh, asking for assistance with the upcoming Butler rally. Uh, we then had a police planning meeting that was on July 8th, 2024, uh, in Allegheny County. And during that meeting is where they relayed the information uh, specific to their request. Uh, and at that point for Butler ESU, that was two counter assault teams and a quick reaction force. Uh, there Commander, was, tell, me, tell me, where, would, where did that meeting take place? I believe it was the Allegheny County Emergency Operations Center. Uh, I could not be there that day. I was actually teaching an active shooter class in Erie, and our, one of our deputy commanders went to that meeting. Okay. Mr. Velasco. Yeah, uh, so, again, uh, we took, uh, from that meeting, um, we took direction from Commander Lenz and the deputy commanders and, and team leaders, and um, we started to formulate a plan uh, of what to do, but the first interaction that I, that I personally had with the Secret Service would have been the uh, July 11th uh, walkthrough at the farm show grounds. So actually on the site? Yes, sir. Okay. That was my question. I know that you were in Allegheny County and they're getting ready for this, but who actually walked the site, saw what it was that needed to be done, and had determined a lot of things, including where the perimeter should be? Uh, I would think that would be there. The, I would supposedly that there would be a lot of coordination between the local law enforcement, the Secret Service, and Homeland Security, who visited that day, um, to prepare for that event. I, th I want to thank you all for, your, for being here today and your testimony. I'm now uh, going to have uh, 